The final selection tool I want to show you today is the wand selector. That's this tool here, the wand tool. Let's have a look up in the options bar. Anti-alias, like before, means no jagged edges, always smooth edges. You're pretty much always going to want to leave anti-alias checked. Contiguous is another word for touching. So when you have contiguous click, that means that it's going to select pixels that are similar in color that are touching each other. What that means is, if I click in this gray box, only that one gray box will select. The reason is that these white borders outside will stop the selection from pouring over the edges. Whereas if I click over here, I'll get all of this black area because it's all reached by adjacent pixels. I don't get this black area over here or this black area here. So that's what contiguous means. You will normally want to choose contiguous. Let's try without contiguous checked and we'll click on say this black here. And you'll see that when contiguous isn't checked, you can get some pretty unpredictable results. This is not very useful uh, selection. So I'll deselect with control D, we'll recheck contiguous and watch. If I click on the red block, the red block selects just the blue, just the yellow, just the gray, just the gray. So you can see this is a very, this is spilled down a little bit here. This is a very fast way to select a touching, a contiguous block of something all the same color, much faster than, select, than using the lasso or the marquee. Of course, we can still do the shift select. So if you want to select a number of blocks, we can do the control select to remove something. So that's the wand. I did want to show you it in a slightly different picture because I want to show you the tolerance. In the last video about using the wand tool, we looked at fairly separate chunks of color, the blue square, the yellow square, the gray square. For that, the wand tool works really wonderfully and we don't have to worry too much about fine tuning the tool. In this video, I want to show you how to use the wand tool in a situation where we have to think about some other options. We're going to select this pink flower. As you can see, this pink flower, sure, it's pink, but it's lots of different shades of pink. It's got some yellow, it's got some white. So we're going to have to work a little harder. I'm going to begin with the tolerance set to 10. Tolerance, as I've talked about before, is the tightness of the color selection. The lower the tolerance, the lower the range of similar colors in adjacent pixels that will be considered for part of the selection. So I'm going to click right here on the pink with the tolerance set at 10. As you can see, we don't get a very big selection. If I shift click, we can keep selecting, but it's going to take quite a few selections clicks to get the whole flower selected. So I'm going to press Control D and I'm going to move it up to 40. Now that's going to be much more easy going about adjacent pixels. So I'm going to click. Oh, already it's going outside the boundary of the flower. So that's probably not what we need either. So I'm going to double click here or I could use the slider. I'm going to move down to 30. It's actually quicker, I find, to just type it in. To be Usually you don't need to be very precise. You're looking for a range. So I'm going to deselect. And let's try the 30. Now that's pretty nice. It hasn't gone outside of the flower, but it's got quite a lot of it done. Now I'm going to hold down Shift when I do that. You see the little plus sign. And I'm going to click in these unselected areas. And we'll keep doing that until all the big areas have been selected. Okay, so here we are. Most of the flower is selected. A little bit of the selection has spilled out. There's still some cleanup to do. We're going to work with the Navigator palette 
to help zoom in on particular parts of the flower. So I'm going to drag the navigator zoom up until the red square, or the, hmm, I can't remember the, the perfect name for it, so we'll go ahead calling it the red square, is smaller. And now when I move over that, the grabber hand will let me move up. And now I can work with this part of the screen and see clearly what I'm doing. So the first thing I'm going to do is hold down shift to get the plus sign and pick up these pieces of the flower that I haven't got selected yet. Now I'm going to hold down control and because I want to sharpen this edge I'm going to move my tolerance down so that it's more precise in its colors. That way when I pick on, click on the pale pink I won't get the deep pink. So I'm going to hit the control for the minus sign and see how that allows me to tighten in to the border of the flower. We're very zoomed in so we can be, we don't have to be terribly, terribly precise. But we certainly want to get the bulk of these pixels unselected. So I'm going to keep doing that until I have all of this unselected. Okay, so here I am. I've got all of that extra unselected. I'm just going to click Shift and pick up these two pixels. And now we'll move around the flower using the navigator panel to allow us to move around, zoomed in, and pick up the few pixels that are still left unselected. In this case, I want to be very persnickety about the selection and make sure it's clean as I can get it. And you'll see why at the end. Generally speaking, the more fuss you make about your selection, the better an end result you'll get. <clears throat> it's very easy working with digital image editing to think, oh, that's good enough. But to truly get to the fabulous effects that we can get to with digital image editing, a little bit of time needs to be taken. So I'm going to keep moving around the flower, picking up these small mist spots. And I think we're done. So let's zoom back out. Whoops, not quite that far out. Yes, that looks very nice, doesn't it? Before I do anything else, I'm going to duplicate the layer, and you'll see why in just a moment. And we have our selection. So now I'm going to cut that flower out of the selection. It doesn't look any different until you look at the layer palette and you see the transparency where the pink flower belongs in the top layer, but the pink flower is still there in the back layer, so we can't see the difference here. But just watch this lovely effect. If I go to the adjustment layer and choose desaturate, that turns this active layer into a black and white photo. And then the only color left is the color from the colored background. And that gives you a really nice effect to just pull one feature out of a picture and make it color. And you do that by working with two layers, making one layer black and white to show the detail from the colored layer below. The wand works well on this photograph because the pink flower is well separated from the surrounding colors. If you have a photograph that's more monochrome, then the wand doesn't work so well because it's hard to get the tolerance to a number where you can easily separate out an object. But in this photograph, it's very successful, although it does take a few minutes. As you saw, I spent some time going around the flower, carefully pulling out all the pixels. And the reason is, I didn't want to see any gray spots on top of my really very lovely flower. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this, and I hope this has helped you understand the tolerance control in the wand tool.